Kennedy has said for years, it's showtime, folks, and it definitely is. Might want to put that Louisville slugger down, because I don't know if that's going to be allowed in this match. Trademark baseball bat brought to the ring by the icon. He's used words like deception, smoke and mirrors. He says, what's black is white, and what's white is really black. But when the veil is lifted and the true colors are exposed, we'll all find out what the story is. And to me, the question is, will that meaning of Sting's unpredictability finally be known to all involved tonight here at Slammiversary? I hope so. I hope, like, like all of our fans, I'm wondering what the hell Sting's talking about, too. Really, I mean, it's just he's not really saying anything, but he's saying things, so it's very confusing. Hopefully, we find out tonight. And there you see the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Mr. TNA, Rob Van Dam. Devastating kicks, always in a relaxed state, very laid back, never tense. But those kicks come from that insane flexibility. Trust me, my jaw can tell you that from experience. <laughs> this guy's blasted me in the face many times, so this should be a hell of a contest. Mr. Earl Hebner. And now, on this, the eighth birthday of Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, it is time for your Slammiversary main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, standing to my left. He weighed in this morning at 250 pounds and comes to us from Venice Beach, California. He is the number one contender for the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. He is the icon, Sting. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, introducing standing to my right. He weighed in this morning at 237 pounds and comes to us from Battle Creek, Michigan. He is the current reigning and defending TNA Heavyweight Champion of the World, Rob Van Dam. Rabbit fan base, 
that Taz talked about earlier, certainly a major part of this Slammiversary main event. Big fight feel right here, folks. I'm telling you, I got goosebumps. Both of these men are very, you know, basically both very used to being in the spotlight, being main eventers. Both Sting and Van Dam. Clash of styles, though, in my view. Just what I was going to point out. Could you really have two more different or two more divergent styles than the champion and the challenger bring to this match? As, as the, this vicious, violent side of Sting comes back out again, takes Van Dam right out to the steel guardrail and continues to beat on him. Yeah, Sting seems like trying to take a shortcut on the outside here. Uh, to maybe get an advantage. Business to take care of with him right here. Uh, 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 Sting, uh, uh, Van Dam, I'm sorry, so uh, got to get back in the ring, and that's what Heaven is saying. Oh, I think I heard Sting say he had business to take care of with Van Dam, and RVD turns it around, sends Sting into the wall, and then kicks him directly into the wall. Oh, <laughs> How many times is <laughs> Van Dam going to drive Sting into that wall? Just keeps bouncing Sting right off of it, and when Sting comes right another back one. at him, that'd be another he one. Throws him again. So that's the thing about Van Dam. Even though he's usually calm, like I said earlier, laid back, he has an extreme, pun intended, aggressive style. Series of shots by RVD as Sting is in a bad way. Hung out over the goal line. Oh, wow. Leg drop across the back of the head. And that flips Sting back inside the guardrail. The momentum of the move. Well, this is for the World Heavyweight Championship. Referee Earl Heaven putting his best effort trying to get these men both in, back in the ring. continues throughout the impact zone as Sting started it. Sting brought RVD outside. RVD, oh, oh my, oh wow. Bad landing there because that's nothing but concrete. Well, I, I guess referee all happen to be a little lenient here for this for the world title. I, I mean, I like that. I like the yeah. fact that it was giving him that opening and especially I like it because it was Sting who took it outside the ring initially. And I guess turnabout's fair play. So Van Dam runs Sting. Into the wall about, I don't know, five or six times. Yeah, repeatedly. Sting trying to clear away. People in the crowd here at Slammiversary so that he can continue to take Van Dam. And well, as we saw earlier, well, it's turn about fair play, I guess. Well, you know what? Hey, listen, Mike. The longer the Sting stays on the outside, in my view, the longer it's in the advantage of Sting. In the ring, between the ropes, I do think Van Dam would have a big advantage on Sting. I do. He has a, a larger offense and an arsenal and a more dangerous arsenal in between the ropes. And Sting rearranging the facial features of Van Dam, and the, you think back to the, the pre-match comments that we heard from both Sting, and we've talked about them repeatedly, but also the pre-match comments of Eric Bischoff, who said we're finally seeing Sting for what he really is. He's not the man that everybody thought that Sting was, he's, he's a fraud. He's hiding behind his mask. He's avoiding the truth, and he's not being honest. Well, we could be right on that. Time will tell, I guess. Well, right now, it's about the World Heavyweight Championship, which is finally in the ring. The beat down on the outside helped for Sting. I'm assuming that was his game plan to weaken the champion on the outside and then take it to him on the inside. The most important possession in TNA, the TNA World Heavyweight title. Sting sizing up RVD. 
Sting sees that TNA World Heavyweight title in his future as he hits a stinger splash to the back of Van Dam in the corner. Might be another one coming. Oh. For years, we've seen Sting hit that to much success. Right on top of Van Dam, and the challenger gets a near fall. We've seen so much success, as Taz mentioned, with those moves of Sting, and not only gaining an immediate pin off of a Stinger splash like that, but also setting up his opponent for a potential Scorpion move, whether it be the Scorpion Death Drop or the Scorpion Death Lock that Sting can bring well, as Van Dam tries to get the crowd rolling here and feeds off the emotion of yep. the fans at Slammiversary. And what Sting's trying to do is keep Van Dam at bay with that rear chin lock to avoid Van Dam, the champion, at a vertical base, because that's where Rob is most dangerous. Because of the uh, insanity of the kicks that he possesses, like that one right there. It's what we've been anticipating, Taz, for the entire part of this matchup, the chance for Van Dam to unleash one of those kicks. You, you mentioned it earlier, how important it was that the match get back in the ring. If for, for Van Dam to have an advantage yeah. to get Sting inside the ring and not brawl with him outside. Correct, and I think that's what Sting's game plan was at the beginning of this thing. And now, you know, we're seeing the champion, Rob Van Dam, taking, taking advantage right now and just rocking and rolling the jaw of Sting. Drops him with the running clothesline. Sting back to his feet, immediately set down, and then the great extension of the leg with the super kick. Well, that's what I was pointing out, the flexibility. The flexibility that Van Dam has in his quads, in his calves, in his hips. And the power he has, I mean, he's extremely powerful as Van Dam. When you think of him, you don't think of him as a powerful wrestler, but he really is. Look at that, look at that thrust kick. Explosive oh. kick out of the corner. Thrust kick leads to two. When Van Dam hits you one of those dives, it's like getting hit with like a small bus. Front Tell slam him. drops him down. Saying that's it. Maybe a little split leg time. Yeah, there it is. We talked about the flexibility. Split leg moonsault on top of Sting, and the champ gets another near fall. I've had the opportunity many times in my career to wrestle Van Dam. I've never had the opportunity to wrestle Sting. But I, you know, I kind of know the offense of our champion, but he changed it a lot. Right there, speaking of changing, changing directions was Sting. He knew the momentum Mike was going towards the champion's favor, and he shut him down. And Sting goes back to what's going to give him the advantage, the strikes in the corner. I think an inadvertent blow caught referee Earl Hebner in the eye. Quickly, Van, Van Dam here. goes up to the top. And oh! Went for the crossbody block. Sting moves out of the way. Blasted him. Referee Earl Hebner got... Drilled. The Sting's, timing was, the Sting's timing was perfect. Moving out of oh. the way, the referee down. So not only does Sting avoid the blow, avoid the contact, but now he can bring the weapon into play, the trademark baseball bat. Yeah, Sting could basically do whatever the heck he wants right now. Oh my God, God right what a face. shot. Referee Earl Hebner. Down and hurt. Oh. Sting taking out the legs, the knee of RVD. And if you're going to use the baseball bat against Van Dam, it's probably the strategy. Yeah, you right. got what, what? what the? Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett had told us all Thursday night on Impact he'd be watching Slammiversary from his home in Tennessee. And God, Jeff Jarrett's here.
Sting had the wherewithal to kick out of that rolling thunder. I thought that was it. <laughs> if we, a, a lot of us did when he hit that rolling thunder. Here he comes. Oh. Nobody home. Oh, RVD oh, hit. trapped in the corner precariously. The number one contender. Might Sting, be on, Sting's got him in his sights. He might be on the cusp of becoming a new champion. Oh, oh maybe not. splash does not connect. Quickness on oh. RVD. Oh, man. Beautiful kick to follow. Uh -oh. Here it comes off the top. Could be going five star. Five star frog splash off the top of the champ. There he goes. He's got a cover. He's got a cover now. Counter. Counts two. Get three. And he's got the win. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the match. And still. Championship in successful fashion on Sting. Man, oh man. <laughs>